The Indian Chief Motorcycle is one of the most instantly recognisable motorcycles ever produced in history. So without any further ado, let's delve into the history of this iconic motorcycle and bust a couple of long-standing myths in the process. First sold in late 1921 as a 1922 model, the very first Indian Chief clearly got its styling from its more sporty and agile cousin, the Indian Scout, which was released two years previous. Matter of fact, it was designed by the very same man, Charles Franklin. It featured a 61 cubic inch or 998cc V-twin engine. It produced 20 horsepower and via its three-speed hand change gearbox, this propelled the bike to a top speed of about 65 miles per hour or 105 kilometers per hour. Suspension-wise, up front, the bike utilised Indian's robust trailing link leaf spring suspension, which compared to other motorcycles at that time, provided a very confident riding experience. Typical of the era, the rear end was rigid, which meant the only cushioning for the rider was via the sprung seat. Also typical for the era, there were no front brakes. Only an external, contracting band rear drum brake was fitted. The following year, Indian released the Big Chief. While visually similar to the 1922 model, it had a larger capacity engine, which was just a tad under 74 cubic inches, or 1206 cc's. This bigger engine produced four more horsepower, and a very carefully tuned one, running on decent fuel, on a smooth road, could actually reach a top speed approaching 85 miles per hour, or 137 kilometers per hour. Typically though, its top speed was more in the vicinity of 70 miles per hour, or 113 kilometers per hour. As usual for Indian, the throttle was the left grip, and Spark Advance and Retard was controlled via the right twist grip. More on this later. Both cables were neatly placed inside the handlebars, and the exiting exposed cables were then covered in a very attractive leather sheet. 1923 was also the last year that the words Hendy Manufacturing Co appeared on the clutch cover. The very next year, these words were replaced with Indian Motorcycle Co. While 24 horsepower might not sound like much at all these days, the 1923 Indian Big Chief was, without any doubt whatsoever, one of the most powerful and fastest motorcycles available in the world at that time. And it also quickly gained a reputation for its superior reliability. Both Chiefs sold alongside each other until 1928, when the smaller Chief was discontinued, and from 1929 only the 74 cubic inch version was available and the Big Chief name was dropped altogether. 1928 was also the year that Indian introduced internal expanding shoe drum brakes on the front wheel, the same type as we see today. Now, time to clear up a very common myth. In 1930, DuPont Motors, yes, DuPont Motors, not DuPont Paint, merged with Indian motorcycles. And Paul DuPont, who was an avid motorcyclist himself, was made president of Indian. DuPont Motors then wound down their manufacturing of cars to concentrate on motorcycle production. With Paul DuPont's family connection to the DuPont Chemical Company's vast empire, which included the manufacturing of paint, many different colours soon became available on the Chiefs. No doubt, at a very good price too. The next major change for the Chief model was in 1932 when Indian adopted their new saddle fuel tanks. Previous, the fuel tanks resided within the frame 
with the frame tubes wrapping around the tank. They were called saddle tanks because they straddled the top frame tube just like a saddle on a horse. Time to bust another century old myth. Why did Indian motorcycles have a left hand throttle? There are many opinions on why this was the case, but opinions are not facts. These opinions included 1. Because Indians had their carby on the left side, it just made sense to put the throttle on the left. 2. Indian just wanted to be different to their arch rival Harley Davidson. And 3. Indian put the throttle on the left side so that the police would be able to shoot a pistol while still being in control of their motorcycle. Which one do you think is the reason why Indians had a left hand throttle? Number one, two, or number three? All three sound very plausible, but after doing a fair amount of research, I found that almost every internet site and every book said the same thing. That Indian did not have a left hand throttle to allow a police officer to shoot while riding. This just leaves opinion one and opinion two, with the most common answer being that the throttle was on the left side because it just made more sense. While this may have been the case in the company's infancy, in fact, all these books and all these internet sites are actually incorrect. Wrong again. I know what you're thinking. Absolute rubbish, laddie. Well, I'm about to put an end to this argument, and here is my proof. An extract from an original printed Indian Moto Company brochure, dated 1932. This settles the argument once and for all, and this is just one example that I have. You see, Indian made their first police special motorcycle in 1926. And the reason why Indian persisted using a left-hand throttle was that they supplied many motorcycles to many different police departments around America and it was a very profitable business for them. Indian dealers were quite successful at procuring the lucrative police contracts because having a left hand throttle was seen as a huge benefit by many police forces around America. In fact, as private customer sales declined dramatically during the troubled period of the Great Depression, the main purchases of Indian motorcycles were police forces and the greater majority of police bikes were in fact Indians. In 1940, the Indian Chief's sheet medal grew much more elaborate, and the massive skirted Art Deco style flared fenders or mudguards made their first appearance. It would be pretty fair to say that this is the very first thing that comes into anyone's mind when they think of an Indian motorcycle. These bikes turned heads everywhere they went, and they still do today. The bike also featured plunger rear suspension, which was far superior to the main rival Harley, who only offered a hardtail or rigid rear end. At that time, Indian's suspension was state of the art. This feature set it apart, and it was a notable selling feature and gave the bike a much smoother ride. In fact, Harley Davidson didn't introduce rear suspension on any of their bikes until 12 years later. While the Chief's flathead engine was considered archaic compared to Harley's overhead valve engine, it used a much more modern ignition system. And by this time, despite the depression, the V-Twin Chief had seen a fair amount of updates and gradual improvements over the years. The bike now produced 40 horsepower. It also had locomotive-like torque. And even though the bike was somewhat of a behemoth, a well-tuned one could still reach a top speed of 90 miles per hour, or 145 kilometers per hour. 1946 saw the next major change with the introduction of hydraulically damped girder front forks on the Chief. An Indian also now offered a special Bonneville edition with many factory engine upgrades. These upgrades boosted engine power and performance. 
These higher spec bikes reach the top speed of 100 miles per hour, or 161 kilometers per hour. Eventually that is, because the Indian Chief was a big touring bike, not a quarter mile blaster. Its foot operated rocker clutch and hand gear change, combined with its very hefty dry weight of 570 pounds, or 260 kilos, meant that even the Chief Bonneville edition's best quarter mile time was only 15.8 seconds. The following year, in 1947, is remembered as being the very first year that Indian's iconic, illuminated war bonnet mascot made its appearance. It was mounted proudly on top of the front fender for all to see. Then, in 1950, the V-twin chief engine was enlarged to 80 cubic inches, or 1,300 cc's, and modern telescopic front forks were also adopted. This larger capacity engine produced 44 horsepower, giving the bike a top speed of 95 miles per hour, or 153 kilometers per hour. The model 353 was the very last chief built at the Springfield, Massachusetts factory when Indian closed its doors in 1953. The next Indian chief to appear under new owners of the brand name was in 1959. But it wasn't an Indian at all. It wasn't made in America and it wasn't even a V-twin. These bikes were actually Royal Enfields, rebadged and sold as Indians. This chief was a 700cc parallel twin, and to rub salt into any Indian diehard's wound, it even sported an illuminated Indian head on the front fender. While the bike was finished well, and it was reliable, it was an ill-fated and blatant attempt to make money using the iconic Indian chief name. And of course, sales proved very poor, and it was only a short-lived project and ended in 1961. 37 years later, another proper attempt at reviving the Indian Chief took place, when another company in Gilroy, California, began manufacturing Indian Chiefs that were again made in America. These Chiefs had SNS B Twin motors, which were 1,442 cc's, and they produced 75 horsepower, substantially more than any previous Indian Chiefs. They were a very beautiful motorcycle, which did the Indian Chief name proud. For 2002, these new Chiefs were updated with a brand new 1600cc engine, which they called the Power Plus. But the engine proved to be very unreliable, and this new company went bankrupt in 2003. A few years later, another company acquired the rights to use the Indian name. These new Chiefs were manufactured in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, from 2009. These Chiefs had a totally redesigned 1,720cc Power Plus V-Twin engine, with electronic fuel injection, as well as many other modern features, including a six-speed gearbox, belt final drive, and four-piston Brembo brakes. These Chiefs were a top-of-the-line motorcycle, and they looked absolutely amazing. But the Indian brand name changed hands yet again, 
and manufacturing was then moved to Spirit Lake, Iowa. And in 2013, they unveiled their brand spanking new Thunderstroke engine. This engine is a true testament to the Indian Chief legacy. It was a modern engine with the look of an old engine, a simply beautiful and amazing piece of engineering. It was the first time that an Indian Chief engine actually looked like an Indian Chief engine since their closure in 1953. The Thunderstroke motor is now 116 cubic inches in capacity, or 1,890 cc's, and it produces 92 horsepower. It also seems that when it comes to torque, which is what you want on a big cruiser, you still just can't beat an old-style, air-cooled, pushrod-operated, two-valve V-twin engine. Because the current Thunderstroke motor produces a whopping 126 foot-pounds or 171 newton metres of torque at a paltry 3,000 RPM. In fact, the only motorcycle engine in the whole world that produces substantially more torque than the current Thunderstroke engine is the liquid-cooled 2,458cc motor that's in the Triumph Rocket 3. The Indian Chief with its rich and fascinating history, is and always will be a favourite among many motorcyclists and a very significant motorcycle. Cheers. Mm -hmm.